Hi, I'm Sherry Safaldi Morrill and welcome to Whole Circle Studio. Today I wanted to share my tips and process for foundation paper piecing, often called FPP for short. If you're not familiar with this quilt piecing technique, here are some of the basics. Fabric pieces are sewn on to a printed pattern, paper, usually paper, and you're using these lines on the reverse side of the paper as a guide to where to sew. Once all the fabric has been sewn together, you then remove the paper and you have yourself a quilt block. I really enjoy this process because it allows for really, really precise results. All of the quilts behind me were sewn using foundation paper piecing, and you can see that the results are super, super precise. I'm also able to achieve designs that I normally wouldn't using other types of quilt piecing techniques. So let's start with the basics. First, you'll need some paper. I like to use just plain old 20 pound copy paper that I find at my office supply store. Some people will like to use newsprint or specialty foundation paper piecing paper. Um, that could be a little pricey. I find that just using plain old thin paper and using a short stitch length, which I'll get to in a little bit, I'm able to really release the paper when I need to. Again, some people find by even slightly thinner papers, it's even easier, but I've never run into any issues with plain old copy paper. Once you have your paper, you'll then need to print out your pattern or your template out on that paper. You'll need one piece of paper for each block that you're making or whatever the pattern calls for. Sometimes you need more than one design to make one block. Essentially, you can't use the template over and over again. You can only use it once and then once it's sewn, then you'll have to rip the paper out. So again, consult with the pattern that you are making for how many pieces of paper to print out. Um, what's really, really important is that you pay attention to how you're printing it. You'll want to make sure that you print at either actual size or 100%. Same goes for if you're photocopying instead of printing a PDF. Um, typically, most patterns will have a little test block that you can measure. So I know by measuring this black box, that's one inch exactly. So as long as I measure it with my ruler after it's printed and it's one inch, I know I'm good to go. It's a good habit to measure each template that you're printing. Sometimes printers and photocopiers can do funky things and print the first page at 100% and then shrink the second one at even 99 or 98%. That slight variation will make a huge difference. Sometimes your blocks won't come together right or sometimes they won't measure the right size at the end. So always measure. Um, another tip, if, especially if you are just starting out a foundation paper piecing, it's a bit easier to piece with solid fabrics versus a print. The reason being is for a solid fabric, it's the same on both sides. There's no right or wrong side of the fabric. So it's just one less thing that you have to think about. So with all of that, let's get started. Here I have my first paper template that I wanna go ahead and paper piece. So again, it's always good practice to double check your measurements so that you know nothing happened when you photocopied or printed. This indicates that that box should measure one inch. So I'll take my ruler and it does indeed measure one inch. So I know I'm in the proper scale, everything printed or photocopied properly. The next thing I want to do is get rid of the excess paper that I don't need. So here, the outer thinner line is the edge of my piece that I'm going to be putting together. And then the inner thicker line, uh, between that inner thicker line and the outer thinner line, that is my quarter inch seam allowance. So again, if this measures one inch, I know that that will measure a quarter of an inch, and it does. So what I like to do here is I have a rotary cutter that I dedicated to just paper. Cutting through paper will dull your blade, so I know that this yellow one that I have here, I only use for paper. Of course, you can use paper scissors to cut. I find this a little bit quicker and more efficient using a rotary cutter. Um, I'll take my ruler and I can align it to that outer edge, that outer thinner line. It's a little bit hard, I find, to see that just with the shadow of the ruler. So what I actually like to do, since I know that the distance between these lines is a quarter of an inch, again, it's my seam allowance, 
What I do is I line up a quarter of an inch from the edge of my acrylic ruler on that inner thicker line. And I find that's a little bit easier to match up than kind of looking on the side. And again, there's a shadow from the acrylic. So once it's lined up, I'll just go around and cut off that excess. These excess strips are fantastic for sticking around, keeping around to then label cut fabric pieces or just scrap paper. Some of them are really tiny, so I'll get rid of them, but the bigger ones I'll keep around. So I'll just go around and trim. And then I have my final cut. And again, I'm using, I like to use, again, just the lining at a quarter of an inch in, and then that'll cut right on the line. So I have my first paper piece that I want to fabric, use attach fabric to. Okay, so typically with foundation paper piecing, you go numerically. Here, it's a little bit different. There's a letter A because um, for this particular pattern, there's a B and a C as well that make up the, the design. But here I have A, so that's the first piece I'll start with. And then typically you'll have numbers. So here you'll see a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. There's also some shading. Again, for this particular pattern, it's coded to what fabrics are recommended. So I'll start with one. I always start at the beginning. Um, I have my fabric here and I pre-cut it, but I'll show you in a minute if you didn't know what size to uh, cut, I'll show you in a minute. You essentially want, I have one that I'm gonna be covering. I want at least, I recommend at least a half an inch to a three quarters of an inch all the way around that shape that I'm gonna be covering. And that includes, if it's towards the edge of the paper, a half an inch to a three quarters of an inch off the edge of the paper. As you become more, uh, practice more with foundation paper piecing, you may need less fabric, but again, it's, it's always start to, better to start with more, you'll be le less frustrated. So this is essentially, because we're gonna be sewing on these lines, if you think of it, this is the back of your block, and the blank side is your front. So what I do first, and again, this is where piecing with solids is a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about the right side and the wrong side of the fabric. But I'm always gonna think about this is the back of my block and this is the front. So for the first piece, it's kind of easy. I'm gonna have my fabric facing out. Now this covers the whole paper piece um, only because again, this shape goes right to edge to edge. Some won't cover the entire paper piece, your first one. But I can see that this shape, one, where I'm outlining with my finger, the fabric will cover all of it. You can see that. And then some, again, by at least a half an inch to a three quarters of an inch. And again, if this is the back of my block, this is the front, the right side of the fabric is facing out for the first one. So what I like to do for the first one is go ahead and secure that. And this is only for the first piece that you go ahead and secure. I like to use a water soluble glue stick. I'll leave in the notes section below this video, the brand and a link to what I like to use. So what I'll do is in this glue stick, water soluble glue stick sticks best with paper to paper than to fabric. So I'll put a thin layer and I'll secure it. And again, when I'm securing it, I'm making sure that section one is covered plus at least a half an inch to a three quarters of an inch all the way around. Okay, so section one is done. Section one is always the easiest one to get started. Now we wanna attach, we're gonna actually sew on the fabric for number two, section number two. So what I like to do, I find this is my, there's lots of ways to foundation paper piece. This I find is the technique that works best for me. So I have section one, I wanna fold back the paper for section two. Um, I like to use just an old room key or gift card, a library card, whatever you have hanging around. I'm gonna put it right on that line and I'm gonna fold the paper back. You can use a ruler. I find that a thin credit card or room key or gift card works best. Um, some people have other tips and tricks. This is just what works best for me. So I'm gonna fold that back, again, right on the line. 
section one I've have done I want to, I'm gonna attack I'm gonna attack section two next or tackle I should say I'm gonna fold that back this is excess fabric it was for fabric for section one I want to get rid of the extra so I'm going to I want to make sure I have a quarter of an inch seam allowance I'm gonna take my ruler And I'm gonna align it to the fold on that paper a quarter of an inch and then trim. And this is just excess. Uh, foundation paper piecing uh, is a bit wasteful with fabric. As you become more experienced, you'll be more efficient with your fabric. But when you're starting with, just go with it that you're gonna be wasting some fabric and not necessarily wasting it. You can do something with this scrap later. So I have my quarter of an inch seam allowance, again, fabric from fabric one. Um, the other thing, instead of a, an acrylic ruler that I like to use is an add a quarter ruler. This is um, not required, but a really nice thing to do if you have if you're paper piecing. Um, the way this works is that you could see there's a little groove in there. And so from that groove to the outer edge is a quarter of an inch. The nice thing about this is with that paper folded back it kind of just latches right to the edge and then i can cut and get a perfect quarter of an inch without having to visually line anything up now i want to prepare my fabric to cover section two which is this area right here so the first thing i'm going to do is select my fabric i have this blue print that i want to cover that with again this is the back of my block this is the front this is where it's easy to get confused. Um, and so this is my way of keeping everything sort of in check and making sure I'm doing everything I need to do to cover that section. So this is the correct side of the fabric, the incorrect side. So just like we do with anything with piecing, I'm gonna put the fabrics right sides together, correct sides together, I should say. Not gonna worry about the position or anything like that. I'm just gonna make sure that the correct sides are together. Okay, so once that's there, I'm just gonna hold it, flip it over, and now is when I go ahead and I make sure that the fabric is positioned. So when it's sewn, the fabric will flip up and cover this whole area. So what I'll do first is flip this back, and this is where um, we need a little bit of x-ray vision and kind of thinking ahead. We're working in reverse, essentially, when we're foundation paper piecing. So I flip this back, I want to cover this whole section. So I know when this is flipped back, right now essentially my blue fabric is flipped back. If I position this piece so that if I ignore sort of this layer, the fabric and the paper behind it, and just focus on the fabric that I'm going to be using to cover the piece, if this area is completely covered by the fabric, plus again, about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch in each area. I know after I sew it and flip it around that it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna go through this a couple of times. So if it doesn't make sense right now, just stick with me. So again, I'm in reverse. The fabric is sort of in reverse. The paper is in reverse. I'm kind of looking. So if I can kind of, again, ignore this, but pay attention to that blue fabric, I could see, well, that line, again, using my x-ray vision is covered. The fabric will cover it. It's a little tight down here, but that's okay because up here I have a little bit of room. In fact, if I wanted to go and go right to the edge, I could. Does, I don't have to. I can always trim that off after. In fact, I'll leave a little bit of extra wiggle room right there. Again, it's at least, you know, I have enough room that way. I do have enough room that way. I have enough room that way, but I'm following this. That paper point right there is pretty tight to that fabric, to the blue fabric. Again, you can kind of see, ignoring the fabric that I used to cover section one. I'm just paying attention to this shape and the blue. So I'm gonna shift this down a little bit. And that looks better. So again, I know I wanna go right to the edge for that paper and that paper section is completely covered by that fabric. And then some, got like a half an inch there, a half an inch there. I could see again, if I'm ignoring this, I could see that blue from that piece. So I should be good to go. So what I need to do now 
is flip this over so I could see the line and I'm going to sew along that line. I prepared my sewing machine for foundation paper piecing by threading a neutral thread. Here I have some white thread. I recommend either a neutral or a color that matches the fabric that you're piecing. I'm using a 50 weight Aurifil thread. I find that that weight is a really good thin weight so that it's not, my stitches aren't too bulky, um, but it's also super, super durable. I went ahead and changed my stitch length to a 1.5. That tight stitch length is great for making sure my stitches are secure. It also will perforate the paper, making it easier to take stitches or take the paper out, I should say, later. Um, I also installed on my machine a foot that I have some really good visibility. I wanna be able to see that needle and follow the line I'm stitching on. What's most important, again, is that you can just follow the line, the printed line. So now I'm ready to move the aligned fabric and paper onto my machine. You can go ahead and secure that with some pins or I usually just hang on to it for dear life. It's gonna be really important for that alignments that we did earlier not to shift. So here I have my paper and my fabric. I'm gonna open it up and I just wanna follow along this line. So here what I'm going to do is I am actually going to start because piece number two and piece number one will go into the seam allowance here. I'm actually going to start on the edge of the paper for this one. Um, later I'll show you where, I um, that, where I'll stop when there's not a seam allowance that I'm working with, but for now we're going to start right on the edge of the paper. Um, I like to do one or two back stitches or a locking stitch. I find that it, with a good 50 weight thread, it doesn't add a lot of bulk, um, but I have some added security for my stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And some back stitches for some added security, especially when ripping out the paper. And then I'm just gonna follow this line. As I get close to the end of the line, I'm gonna stop and think for a second. So right here you can see, um, for piece number three, I'm gonna think ahead. I could just continue to the edge. What I like to do though, is if there's another piece that I'm gonna be sort of sewing on, you could see piece three, we're gonna kind of go this way with, I'm gonna stop right at that intersection. If you forget or you're not sure, it's not a big deal. Um, you just may have to, if you went ahead, you may have to rip out some of the paper um, or just kind of tear it back a little, not a big deal. But again, because I have to sew piece three on it a little bit, I'm gonna stop right there where they intersect or where they meet, I should say. And I'm gonna give it a back stitch or two. If I go slightly over the line, not a big deal. I do it all the time and I'll just back stitch. Hey, I made it right on the line today. So now we'll trim and I'm, we're gonna check to make sure that everything lines up. Next step is I wanna go ahead and make sure that my section number two is indeed covered with my fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is how it came off the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my fabric around. See my correct sides of the fabric facing out. And when I flip it over, piece number two is indeed covered. I got these little edges and that point is covered and then some, again, everything goes off the side of the paper for that where it needs to. So I am all good. Um, what I do need to remember is I'm gonna need to fold this back, basically how it came off the machine. So I'm gonna fold my fabric back and then I'm gonna fold my paper back and I just wanna go ahead, I didn't quite align the raw edges. I could have, but I didn't, and that's okay. Um, I just wanna trim off that extra seam allowance. Um, this is another part where people sometimes get a little too eager and um, things can go haywire. Again, 
Make sure that the fabric you just sewed on is flipped back and that your paper is flipped back and that you're not, you're only cutting seam allowance. So it's always a good idea to take a deep breath and make sure that that's the case. So now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use my adder ruler. I'm gonna again, put it right into that groove. Grab my rotary cutter. And again, just make sure everything is nice and even with my seam allowance. It just makes your sewing a lot nicer and neater. Now what I need to do before I proceed is open everything up, open up the fabric, open up the paper, and I wanna give this a good press. Um, if you don't make sure that it's nice and flat, when you add on the next piece, you can get sort of a bubble or sort of a ledge almost. You wanna make sure everything lays nice and flat. Um, it's really difficult to, and sometimes impossible to fix that once you start adding on other pieces. So I went ahead and I heated, heated up my iron. Um, some people flatten it with a seam roller. Um, I will sometimes, I just find that a hot iron is always best, taking the extra time to do that. So never, ever, ever, press on the paper side. All of that ink is gonna to transfer to the bottom of your iron. So you're gonna make sure it's um, flipped over. What I like to do is kind of give it, not yank it, but a little bit of a tug to help it lay it flat. Again, I'm gonna press, not iron, keep it, in, um, keep it still. If you iron it and start moving the iron around, it has a tendency to warp or distort your fabric. So I'm just pressing a nice hot iron without burning my finger. Yeah, that's laying nice and flat. And I'll do it over here. And now that lays nice and flat, so I'm ready to move on to my next piece. So this pressed piece is looking really good. One thing I wanted to mention as far as ironing and pressing, make sure there is no steam or you don't spray any water when foundation paper piecing. Um, if you have steam or any sort of moisture, that's just gonna dissolve your paper and that is gonna be really bad. We wanna make sure that paper stays nice and dry. Okay, so now we're gonna move on. We have section one covered, section two, so section three is next. So I wanted to show you again, foundation paper piecing can be a bit wasteful with our fabric. You could see I pre-cut a rectangle because rectangles are pretty easy to cut to cover section two. Let me show you how I figure out what size fabric I need for fabric, or sorry, for section three and how I could be pretty efficient for getting that fabric. So section three, I'm gonna use this blue fabric again. Um, so right now I have a huge piece of it. Um, I'm just gonna, again, for the purposes of demonstration, and sometimes this is how I paper piece, um, I'm gonna show you again how I'm pretty efficient with my fabric. So first thing I first, I need to prepare for section three. So again, I'm gonna sew along this line. One and two are done, I wanna add three. So I'm gonna be sewing along this line right here. And section three is here, so that's what I wanna cover. So again, um, this section right here, I'm gonna draw this line. Section four, I'm actually gonna stop right there sewing because section three is just this area. I can always draw that line just to remind myself. I'm just gonna fold back the paper, again, along that line. section three. So I don't need this fabric. This fabric was for section one. So I'm just going to fold back the paper and cut the seam allowance off. Yep. The other thing I can do is again, I have lots of extra here. If it gets in my way, um, I typically will wait until the end until all the sections are filled to trim the edges nice and neatly. Um, but what I can just do is do a rough cut and just get that out of the way. These little corners might confuse me or get in my way and I don't need them. They're off the perimeter of my paper. So I'll get those out of my way. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to section three. So again, I wanna cover 
that area and then some, at least like I said, about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch all the way around. So I'm gonna fold this back. Again, my trick is I have my right sides of my fabric. This is my right, correct side of the fabric. I'm gonna put these together. I'm not gonna necessarily worry, again, I don't typically worry about the arrangement. I just make sure I get one thing out of the way. I have my fabric in the right orientation. So this is um, now where I have to be able to figure out how big my piece of fabric needs to be. So here I could see, again, I'm gonna use my x-ray vision. This is the area I wanna cover. If I fold that backwards, I could see by just flipping it over that that blue fabric will cover that whole area. But this may not be the most efficient way for me to cut that fabric. Um, I could get close, again, I know I can get close to that seam allowance, so I'm just gonna rotate it and then kind of see. And I'm like, hmm, okay, so here is the piece. I know section three is what I need to cover. That's in reverse. That fabric, I could see, will cover it. So what I can do is I can use my rotary. I like to use my scissors and just do a rough cut. Um, I can see there might be even a more way, efficient way for me to cut this fabric, but I'm gonna go for this right now. I'm not gonna drive myself crazy. It's near the edge. I can use this area for something else. So I'm just gonna fold this back. Again, I could see this is the shape that I wanna cover. I'll just fold this back and just do a rough cut. And again, this shape, this folded back shape is what I wanna cover. And again, I wanna cover it, but then also extend it by at least, give myself a little bit of a wiggle room of half an inch to three quarters of an inch. So again, Shape three is in reverse. The fabric is in reverse, that light blue. I can kind of pull this back and see that it'll cover it. It'll cover it, the ends will be on. So I know that that's where that would be fine to sew on. So I'm gonna open this up. And again, I'm gonna sew along that line. I just got back from my sewing machine and I attached section number three. You can see I started right on the edge, did a couple of back stitches, traveled down, traveled down, and then I stopped right at this line because section four sort of intersects it. So I stopped the right there and just did a couple of back stitches um, and that will get me ready to see how I did with section three and then move on. So again, here's the moment of truth. We're gonna flip the fabric back. And I can see that again, section three is completely covered and then some. It goes off the edge by about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch. Most important thing, it doesn't even have to be that much. Again, I say give yourself wiggle room, but as long as it's right at that edge of the paper for, because it's an exterior, then you're all good to go. So I know that this is good. Again, I wanna put everything back as if it came off the machine. So my fabric is folded back. I'm gonna fold my paper back and I'm gonna get rid of any excess in the seam allowance. Again, I'm measuring a quarter of an inch from the fold. Again, taking a breath, making sure my fabric that I just sewed on is folded back. My paper is folded back, very important. And then I trim my seam allowance. If I did happen to cut through my paper, um, which happens sometimes, I can always tape it. Just use some scotch tape and you can stitch right over the scotch tape. If I did happen to cut through my fabric by accident, say this was flipped back and I cut it, I was a little too eager, then I would just take my uh, seam ripper, rip that out, and then just start over again. It is bound to happen. So now that everything is stitched, I open it up. And again, I wanna give it a good press.
Again, I'm going to push this. I'm not yanking. I'm just giving it a little bit of a tug and I'm pressing. I want to make sure everything lays nice and flat before I add on the next piece. Great, and that feels good. No ledge or bump or anything like that. Next, we're ready to tackle section number four, which is this thin little section, which may be a little scary, but it's just like piecing any other section. So let me show you how. Again, we want to fold back based on the line, on the line that we're gonna be sewing on. So again, one, two, three. So now we wanna sew on four. So I'm gonna, we're gonna sew right along this line here. So I'm gonna take my old room card and fold that back. Again, I don't wanna be confused. This is kind of a thin line. Again, I wanna fill up four and I haven't sewed on this line yet between again, one, two, three, and then adding on four. So it's the line on the left. Put my card right along it. Take my ruler and cut off that quarter inch seam allowance. Get this extra out of the way. And again, um, if you're using one of my patterns um, or some other pattern, sometimes the pieces are all pre-cut. You could pre-cut the fabric. I want to show you what to do if, again, the instructions for the pattern you're working does not have pre-cut or if you want to be a little bit more efficient. So piece four, again, I'm going to use this blue fabric. I'm not going to worry about arrangements quite yet. I'm just going to put the fabric right sides together. So or correct sides together, I should say. Correct side, correct side. Just gonna plunk it down. Again, I'll try to get it pretty close to my seam allowance. And then I'll look at the arrangement. So this is a little bit, could be a little bit tricky to take to look at. Again, I wanna cover this sort of thin, area right there. I'm not, don't need to worry about five. I want to cover that little strip plus again a half an inch to three quarters of an inch in all the directions. So I'll fold this back and again this is sometimes where having x-ray vision helps. Um, it also sometimes helps, again, if the section, so far we've been doing sections that go off the edge of the paper, so it's easy to kind of see what you're covering in reverse. For this, it's a little bit more difficult. So what I'm gonna do is I can hold it up to the light, a light box, or hold it up to the window. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line. I can kind of see through the paper here. You may not see it on camera, but I could see it, where the section ends. So again, the section is this area here, section four. It happens to go off the edges of the paper here, but not that way. So I just flipped it back and kind of drew in where it ends. So it's sort of this sliver that I want to cover. So again, I picked it up. I want to make sure correct sides of the fabric together. I'm going to align the raw edge pretty close to the raw edge here. It could be exact. I'm just not going to worry about that being exact at this moment. I don't mind wasting a little bit of fabric. So I'm just going to kind of get it close. And then again, I drew it some markings in reverse with a pencil. I could see that this is the shape I want to cover. We're working in reverse. So what I'll do is kind of rough cut. Again, be careful when you do this that you don't cut through what you've already sewed. I'm going to pick this up and kind of eyeball it from behind. Rough cut that shape that I'm trying to cover plus again a little bit extra half inch to three quarters of an inch. It could be more. And again, this is if the pattern you're working with doesn't have pre-cut fabric. So 
So I'll double check. Um, I can kind of see again that's covered. If I pick it up, it extends beyond that. So now again, I'll flip this up and I'm gonna sew along that line. And again, because it goes edge to edge here, I'll go right to the edge of the paper. Let me show you what those stitches look like. So again, because four went edge to edge, I went ahead and I started it right on the edge there. I sewed down and then finished up here and back stitched. So again, what I'll wanna do now is test, open this up. I'm gonna open up the fabric. Again, the correct side's facing out, so that's great. Turn it over and I can see that that new blue piece covers, definitely covers four from this line beyond at least a half an inch to three quarters of an inch, even more. I could have been a little bit more efficient with my fabric. And because it goes off the edges, I could see it extends past there. So that's great. So again, very important. We're gonna fold our fabric back to the way it was when it came off the machine. I'm gonna fold my paper back because I don't want to sew. I don't want to cut through what I just sewed or the paper. Trim my quarter-inch seam allowance. Open this up. I'm gonna press it and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish up putting on section number five. I just went ahead and I finished up four and I got my section five on. I made sure I cut my seam allowance, flipped it back, gave everything another good press and I have this section of the block complete. So let me just show you one other thing. Um, once you have all of the fabric on, you have all your sections complete, you can go ahead and trim up that section of the block or that block, I should say. Um, so what I typically do, again, I use my acrylic ruler. Um, I know that from the outer edge that I cut the paper on to that inner line, that is my quarter inch seam allowance. Um, again, I find it a lot easier to measure a quarter of an inch on my ruler on that ex that printed line than to kind of look at the side and be like, oh, is the paper, is it aligned to the paper, is it not? There's sort of always a shadow there, I find. So again, I use that line and match up a quarter of an inch, which again is essentially just making the acrylic ruler flush to my paper. And then I just go ahead and trim. And I'll do this on all four sides. And then suddenly our block looks really, really nice and neat and complete. So let me go ahead and finish and trim this and I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. And some patterns, such as this one that I'm working on here, call for additional paper pieces to be done and then to be sewn together. So in that case, I would make sure that all of my paper pieces are together and sewn together before I take any paper out. But once everything is complete, you can then go ahead and take the paper out. I hope you're inspired to go out and foundation paper piece your next project. With some patience and practice, you'll be foundation paper piecing in beautiful blocks in no time. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and hit subscribe to be alerted when new video tutorials are available. For even more tips, tutorials, and behind the scenes, please visit wholecirclestudio.com and click on the blog. Or to see all of my foundation paper piecing patterns, click on shop. Thank you for joining me today and go out and have some fun foundation paper piecing.